you know who's having a pretty interesting year? I wanted to head over to Edmonton and talk about Jesse Pugliarvi. Because when it comes to JP, and is that a nickname? Do people call him JP? Bison. Let's just stick with that. When it comes to the Bison of Edmonton, he has had a pretty interesting career the past few years, but with his contract expiring this upcoming offseason and him being an RFA to be, it makes things really interesting when you discuss where you go with this player and when you discuss how exactly he's been doing the past few weeks. So, Jesse Pugliarvi, born May 7th, 1998, 23 years old, 6'4", 201, a right-handed right wing player. He's making a pretty small amount of money, $1.175 million this season. It does expire at the end of the year. We all recognize what it is that Pugliarvi is for the Oilers. He was a fourth overall pick taken in the 2016 NHL entry draft. He was seen by a lot of people back in 2016 as a potential immediate NHL impact player. Alongside of Matthews and Line. a lot of people said Pugliarvi could be one of these elite, bona fide, game-changing forwards because as a power winger that had some really good skill and finesse to his game... There was a lot to like when it came to Pugliarvi and what he was in the Finnish Liga level. Ever since that draft in 2016, though, he's had some pretty strange development. It's not really been all too linear as you would have liked it to be, and he didn't come into the NHL and make an immediate impact in the same way that Lion A or Matthews did. Pugliarvi had some growing pains, and this was some of the most documented and most speculated upon growing pains that we had seen in the past few years for any of these NHL guys coming out of the draft. It got so bad to the point that we actually saw Pugliarvi leave the Oilers in 2019 to go play a full season in the Finnish Liga after spending a few years up and down in the AHL and the NHL over here. He didn't get the proper development that he wanted, and he didn't get the proper deployment that he wanted over here, too. There was a lot of controversy going around with Pugliarvi, and... Firstly, it was whether or not the Oilers were using him correctly. Secondly, it was a question about his engagement and commitment to the team, too. Give it a year in Finland, where Pugliarvi looked good, and to be fair, he was supposed to look good because he was an NHL-caliber guy that you could debate was not really being given the minutes going over to a lower hockey league. No disrespect to my Finns over there that are watching this video, but the Liga is not the NHL. And Pugliarvi had himself a good season. He was under a point per game. He was all this and all that. Eventually, he played the start of the 2020-2021 season in Karpat as well. And then he came back to the Oilers. It was actually a pretty big deal when we learned that Pugliarvi was not going to stay away from the team any longer and that he actually wanted to try and come back and be used in a role again. And there were many Oilers fans still believing in what was Pugliarvi's potential, taking a look at the skills that he had, the positioning, the IQ, just what it was that he did right, the little things out there. Was Pugliarvi going to be like a Rick Nash hybrid with two-way ability and finesse like we thought he would be back when he was going to be drafted in 2016? Probably not, but he still had a pretty good NHL projectability to his game. Not to mention the fact that, of course, his personality is pretty bubbly, he's got some great interviews, his lack of knowing English was always a pretty good highlight when he would get interviewed, and he put up 25 points in 55 games played in his return to the Oilers, and didn't look too out of place. Now you take a look at where he is this season, he's got 34 points in 59 games played too, 13 goals, 21 assists on pace for 39 points over 68 games, do the math over 82, and it looks a lot better, 34 divvy 59 multiplied out by 82, Poli Arvey's on pace for a 47 point year this season. Now. The question remains as to where the Oilers go from here. We know their cap situation has been somewhat of a highlight when you're discussing where the Oilers go in the next few off-seasons here, and Ken Holland made it very clear that they couldn't actually add at the trade deadline a significant piece because they just didn't have the money to do so. They added Brett Kulak, and that was about it. And so for Paul Yarvey and the way that he's developed so far, you gotta ask yourself, he is an RFA, he will be expiring, what exactly is the price tag on this kind of player? He's a 40-50 point winger, but there's a lot more than meets the eye when you take a look at Paul Yarvey just beyond the raw point totals. The last game the Oilers had against the Colorado Avalanche, a very tight 2-1 loss in overtime. Paul Yarvey had some really good cross-crease opportunities sent over to him right from Connor McWheelhouse. Both of these opportunities were stopped 
shot by Darcy Kemper, and you could argue that both of these opportunities were not really used in the best way they could have been used. He shot the puck towards the middle of the goal instead of going top corner, and as a result, he got saved on both of those shots. Those should be prime grade A goals, guaranteed expected goals on a game. It's just unfortunate that he got saved on both of those opportunities. Now, you could say, darn it, Pugliarvi, he can't finish, what's going on in tight, he can't shoot it in the open spaces of the net, he shoots it towards the goaltender instead, and you could also say, hey, he had two prime grade A chances in front, whereas nobody else was able to get anything like that. The only goal scored was a tip-in by, I forgot who it was, I think it was Fogel, I believe, and so Pugliarvi being able to find those positions in the first place in itself is a good thing. And there are some other statistics that I wanted to highlight over here as well that kind of go over that same idea. This is a post on the Oilers subreddit published by Mission Incredible. I'm not really too sure where the stats come from. Ah, oh, there you go. Natural stat trick from this season. This is Jesse Pugliarvi's impact on Edmonton's top centers. McDavid with Pugliarvi has a higher goal share, 5v5, by 17%. So that is more goals are going in when McDavid is playing with Pugliarvi compared to when he is not. McDavid has a higher expected goal share when he's playing with Pugliarvi compared to when he is not by 5%, meaning that the majority of the chances that should be goals are going his way too. And then when it comes to 5v5 points per 60 minutes, Connor McDavid has almost a full extra point per 60 when he's with the Bison compared to when he is not. Dry Seidel, same thing. Ryan Nugent Hopkins, same thing. Both of these guys actually have significantly improved results when they play with Pugliarvi compared to when they don't. For Dry Seidel and the Nuge, they both actually have negative 5v5 expected goal shares when they don't play with Pugliarvi, meaning that the expected goal chances actually favor the opposition when they're not on the ice with him. But again, when they play with him, you can see the expected goal share goes up to 66% Nugent Hopkins and 58% for Dreisaitl. This means that they get the majority of the chances on the ice. The points per 60 also go out there and influence themselves heavily with Pugliarvi as well. And I know sample size is definitely something that you could say, okay, he didn't really play too much with the Nuge. That's one of the comments that is brought up here on the Reddit post as well. But you have to understand that Pugliarvi and the way he perceives the game, the way he thinks it and the way that he plays, it's so effective when it comes to allowing his line mates to just do what it is that they do best. One of these comments over here sums it up pretty nicely. Screen names are too hard, says, He is absolutely amazing when it comes to detail, positioning, and hockey IQ. Like, make his line mates not have to worry about defense amazing. Now, just take the 10,000 practice shots from awkward release points and we should be good. Birkin replies, lol, it has nothing to do with Hockey IQ, dude. He's just an insanely good, relentless forechecker. He's amazing at winning the puck back to the boards, which means we retain possession and other forwards don't have to backcheck as much. His production is a result of hardworking and forechecking, not necessarily Hockey IQ. And so, there's a lot to like here when it comes to pulling ERP, and I think... The majority of Oilers fans can acknowledge that, yeah, even though he doesn't have the most points out there, even though he's only on pace for 50, compared to Connor McDavid and his 120-point pace, for example, there still is a very good profile here. It's just a question as to how much that is worth. How much do you pay for a 50-point winger in the NHL that makes the best players on your team even better? Is that two, three million dollars? I probably think not, right? He's worth a lot more than that. And so the question with what the Oilers do with Evander Kane, with Pugliarvi, with Yamamoto next season, and with the amount of cap space they have, which is roughly, let's say, $8 million for next year? Yeah, it's going to be tough to try to maneuver around that cap with all the contracts they have and all the things that they're going to have to do. I didn't even mention Miko Koskinen. It's already kind of a guarantee that he's going to leave, so enjoy him while you can, I guess, Oilers fans, but... Either way, let me know in the comments all your thoughts about Pugliarvi, what the plan is for him next season, and how you feel like he's been performing this season. The production has been okay. It's not phenomenal by any means, but it's okay. But the on-ice analytics as to what he does for the players around him, you could argue is even greater than the numbers that he has been putting up. What do you think about this entirely? Do you think this is a sustainable trade of his? Do you like Pugliarvi just because of the memes? Or do you think that he legitimately has a very defined spot on this Oilers core in the long-term future? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. I hope you enjoyed this Vrishraj Rolls 99. And, bye.